So this is what the cabinet will theoretically look like. Unfortunately, I have bad news. If I flip this around, I was taking my drawer slides, sticking them in to see how well they fit. And sadly, this is the only drawer that has the proper clearances, which is a sad reality considering that I took the time to carefully measure how each cavity came out. And I must conclude that wood is just not a very accurate thing to work with. At any rate, I need to find a solution. So, I need to find a way to somehow thin the drawer up. And the easiest way to thin this drawer down would be to just run it over the jointer, thin this edge down. But I can't do that because I built these with leaving an ear that's supposed to cover the drawer slide. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just cut this little ear off on all the drawers, thin them all down properly, and after that I'll make false drawer fronts to go in front of these. At least it's just pine. A well, good thing I used clamping squares when I made these drawers. So this edge, the front face to this board, is pretty square. So I'm going to cut these ears off right at my miter saw. Now that I have the ears going, I can clean them up at the joint here. I'm going to pick the better looking face, and I'm going to put it down. Since I do have a little bit of end grip at the end, I'm going to go very slowly as I go over the jointer so we don't get any tear out. So after one shave on the jointer that didn't quite do it, it's still pretty tight. So I'm going to continue shaving it on the table saw because I'm very interested in keeping these boxes parallel, not only flat. Well, I got all the drawers trimmed and now they look great. They're just the perfect amount of fit. By the time I put a little bit of polyurethane on to protect them, they're going to fit I'm great. A test fit was actually putting my router table on top of the cabinet. I must have mismeasured how big my router table was because I actually have about a quarter of an inch on each side that the router table overhangs the cabinet. I don't really like that, so I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece that's about an inch longer than this and to keep that same overlap I'll make it also come out a half inch over the front and it'll kind of cover my drawer fronts too. So it's kind of voila that. the top is cut and I think that looks quite a bit better having it come all the way more flush with the edge of the router table and this looks like kind of a big gap here but once I put the drawer fronts on that's gonna look pretty good. Now I want to take care of the sharp corners on this top. I'm just going to take a socket and use that as a template to draw an arc in the circles and I'll take care of that at the disc sander. I'm going to install a piece of plywood on here. I need this to be flat and I've got just a little bit of a ridge here from this rabbit joint. So I'm going to trim that up with a flush trim bit on my router. I'm going to fasten this top down to the cabinet with glue and brad nails. Now I'm going to use that same bit in a handheld router to round over the edges on the top. Well, I had a little chip out issue and I run it over this top. This plywood had no intermediate layer here and it kind of blew out. So I'm going to attempt to fix that by taking a piece of plywood I have and chiseling a layer off. Make it a little thinner. There we go, now I got it for it's fitting right in this groove pretty well. It's gonna put a little glue on that. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's better than nothing. And now that this fix is dry, I can just cut it off and sand it up with my sander. Well, I cut a sheet of plywood that's gonna end up being all five drawer fronts. And I'm gonna just set it in here. I'm gonna slide it back. I'm just going to mark off where I want to cut it. 
And then those kerf lines are going to become my gap that's between the drawers. I'm going to stack cut them so that that line ends up exactly in the same spot on all the drawer fronts. Boy, what a pain. Hopefully this is the last time I have to put my router table on my bench to use it. But I'd like to give a shout out to Triton Tools at this time. As I showed you, I have a Triton plunge router under this Bosch router table. And when I bought the router, it came with a half inch collet and a 3 8 inch collet. Here in the United States, the most common router bit shanks are quarter inch for smaller bits and half inch for bigger bits. So I wasn't able to run my quarter inch router bits in the router because it was mispackaged with the 3 8 collet. So I contacted them and they sent me out a free quarter inch router bit collet and uh, they said I could just keep the 3 8 one. So thank you Triton Tools for your uh, service and support. And now I can actually round over the front of my bits by putting a router bit in my router table. Very useful. Now I can sand all my pieces and I'll be ready for the finishing room. So I finished my cabinet with two coats of brown paint and then I put polyurethane on the top and on the sides just to give them a little added perfection. It's just one coat, should help a lot. Well, I tried to put these drawers in by perfectly spacering these in the cavity with different rulers and then screwing it together, but it really didn't come out as perfect as I was hoping. So now instead of doing that, I'm going to just straight off go for these vertical adjustment slots, get a screw in there, and then I can tighten it up and play with the alignment. And then when I'm done, I'll take the drawer out and screw it in final. And I get to attach the casters to the bottom. I figure by putting the back casters this way, it'll brace it, the cabinet better as I'm pushing this way to run material across. With the cabinet sitting on its casters and on the ground, I'm now attaching the drawer fronts and I'm using a method I saw on YouTube of applying hot glue to the drawer front and then using my eyes to line it up. So you got that position, you just hold it until that glue sets. I'm holding the drawer fronts on by putting through bolts through here. Now, before I put nuts on the back of those and get that down permanently, I'm gonna pull the handle all the way out. I'm gonna rip it off, it's just hot glue. I'm gonna take a chisel and I'm gonna chisel the hot glue off because that hot glue adds thickness, and I want these to sit flush against my drawers. See, it's just like tape. kind of just falls right off. And now, I can put nuts on the back and tighten it up. And if you don't get it the first time, rip it off, try it again. And now the moment we've been waiting for. I'm attaching the router table to the new cabinet. I've already centered it. I'm just going to use a centering punch and punch the holes and pull it down with leg screws. And hey folks, don't forget to put the back on. I use painter's tape to tell me where the ribs are so that I can just run screws right into them. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good right there. Oh, that's great. You know, those casters lock not only the wheels, but also the swivel. So this thing is rock solid. It's about the same height as my table saw. That's what I was going off of. And this is going to be great. I'm not going to be up here like an ape hanger when I'm trying to run boards through my router table. And I can still reach under here pretty easy. If you have this Bosch router table, I'm going to include a free set of plans to this uh, cabinet that I built for it. It's not going to be full detail. I didn't go into the detail of making the drawers and stuff, but it'll have basic dimensions. So if you'd like to make it, you can work off of that. Thank you for watching this episode of Craftsman David. I hope you enjoyed this project and got some benefit out of it. See you next time, folks.